that's what we do. Let's dive into this one. Hi, hello everybody, it's the Good Enough Scott here. Today we are reviewing the movie, The King of Staten Island. It has Bill Burr in it. I knew about it when it first came out, but I'm not a huge fan of paying those $20 rental fees for streaming. I'm just, just like me and my wife, so it's not a good deal. If I had a family of like 10, then maybe that'd be different. I'd be like, sure, that's a great deal. The King of Staten Island is a 2020 movie. This is day 28 of my 30 day video day challenge, by the way, guys. If you wanna see the other movies in this playlist, please feel free to check them out. I will put them at the end of this playlist. If you're like me, you're a huge fan of Bill Burr, and you were hoping that Bill Burr had his hand on this movie. He certainly did. Let's check it out. Summary from the internet. A semi-autobiographical comedy drama about Peter Davidson, the SNL guy, growing up in Staten Island, including losing his father during 9-11 and entertaining the world of stand-up comedy. Although it is about Peter Davidson, it's not about his father 9-11, dying 9-11, and it's not showing him about the stand-up comedy part. So the general summary of the story, in my own words, is about his struggle to become a man. Uh, his father has passed away. He was a fireman who died not in 9-11, but in some tragic incident and never really had that male role model and having trouble kind of a failure to launch scenario. And that's the general summary of this movie. This one. Everybody will get it at a different time. That's what Bill Burr's character says. Everyone will get it at a different time. Some people, I disagree, some people never get it. Some people's rock bottom never occurs. Some people's rock bottom is dead. You have to find your own path. And in order to find your own path, you have to have your safety nets removed. For a long time, you see this in a lot of people. They don't have their safety nets removed. So it's like, I don't wanna to go to work. I don't like this job, blah, 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 blah. Well, a lot of people don't like their jobs. A lot of people don't wanna to go to work, but what makes you do it is if you have to because you got to pay your bills and you got to eat. When you have someone like an enabler keeping you at home, feeding you just enough to where you're uncomfortable but not enough to change, this is what happens to people. And I saw this in this movie. That's the deeper meaning. You have to get out on your own. You have to be your own man or your own woman. Until that happens, you're going to kind of suffer and wonder why you don't have motivation and always have excuses. And I definitely saw that in my own friends growing up and I definitely experienced that some myself until you get out on your own, then yeah, it's scary, but you'd be amazed. Trust me, you are a lot stronger than you think you are. Opinion of this movie, The Bad. Why can't they have part two? Just like the same complaint I had with Good Will Hunting. You follow this character all through their struggles. Like you go through their crud and you're like, come on, and then they succeed. Why not go with them? I want to see a little bit more. This one, they didn't show more of the comedian, his comedian life. I want to know what that's like. It shows them in New York all, hmm. And that's it. Come on, we went through all the crap. Let us see that part, at least a little bit. Another thing is they had quite a bit of time of him just being a total slacker, not being motivated, being a real F up, not doing anything. And once the change starts occurring, once his life gets uproots him, boom. I felt like his change occurred a little too quick. I would have liked to have them show, I think it kind of did in a montage change. So you saw the external change, but they didn't show the internal change. And I feel like the beginning they showed his internal struggle. So I would have liked them to show the internal change within him during this process. But instead they kind of did the back montage thing. Maybe even asking about what was his passion. They didn't really define that. We kind of, I kind of assumed it was comedy just because it's kind of based on Pete Davidson's life. But I don't know. In the whole movie he never showed really real being a funny guy or anything. So I'm not sure why he would have been into that. That was kind of weird. The Good. Bill Burr does an amazing job. It's very obvious to me. I'd be really surprised to find out Bill Burr didn't help write this. Because some of the dialogue, he goes on his rants, and maybe his rants are him just free balling or something, but it's super funny. He cracks me up. So if you like Bill Burr, you're going to like this movie. It's got his rant stuff. It also feels like it has other characters, like Pete Davidson's influence. Maybe some other comics, too. There's some females in there that do some really funny things, too. Maybe their comics as well. I'm not sure, but it did feel like there was a lot of com really good comedical writing in this. So I really recommend it. It's really funny. I really liked it. I like how they show Bill Burr, which is Ray Bishop is the character he plays, and uh, Marissa Torme, her character, which is Pete Davidson's character's mother. She's single, and all of a sudden he starts coming around. He's like the new man, the new lion moving in or something. I like how they show that relationship from his, from Pete Davidson's character's 
perspective. With him, he's like, what the, what the heck's going on, man? But then you can tell they've had their discussion about dealing with him still living at home and what to do with him. This new man's having to say in it, and it's BS, and mom seems like she's putting her foot down more because she has support, and it's just really like, ooh, yeah, I get it. I understand. Totally. They do it really well on that. So overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I'm going to have to say I recommend this movie. Uh, it really shows and highlights the performances of Marissa Torme, Bill Burr, and Pete Davidson doing a great acting job. Clearly, their humor's in it, too. If you do not like, especially Bill Burr, because it has definitely Bill Burr's touch to it, then you're not going to really care for the movie. But it's a great coming-of-age movie, and I really enjoyed it. Before I give my overall scale of 1 to 10, though, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave comments about what you thought of this movie, or if you think you'll go see it, or what you even think of Bill Burr. But without further ado, I'm going to give King of Staten Island a 2020 movie a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, boy. Thank <laughs> you.